All right, well, it's the first batch of uh, honey, three pounds, 8.8 .8 ounces, after uh, tearing it for the, uh, for the Pyrex bowl itself. Um, I kept my, uh, kept my ladle that I ladled it out with just in here. This is the sterilized bucket where everything's gonna end up anyway. You might wonder, well, what do you need that little bit of sugar for? Well, it's yeast starter time. Got my tin foil over, over just a little, little jar full of water. Kind of lukewarm water. Let's check the temperature here. Oh, well, it looks like we got a little bit over 80. So uh, I'm gonna, gonna add just a little bit of cold water. I like to shoot for right at 80 degrees. Get some light on the subject here. All right. Let's uh, put this in the sink here. Just add a little drip. Should take us back down a little bit. Basically, I think anything between 70 and 90 kind of works. I mean, yeast is pretty resilient, especially this champagne yeast. So now we're, uh, we're at 85, and plus it'll cool when I add the yeast, because this yeast was in the freezer. So uh, first of all, I'm gonna add a little sugar. So let me uh, get this close to the edge here. Take out my thermometer. Well, I'll leave that in there off to the side. Now, easy little trick here. Grab our ladle. And we'll just keep twirling it here until we get it over here. And we'll get some, some, there we go. Doesn't take much sugar, obviously, since it's such a small amount and it's just supposed to get the yeast started anyway. So, hope you can see that. It's hard to do one person. Cover this back up, keep it nice and, nice and, Sanitary, okay. So now we've got a little bit of honey and about an 80, 80 degree water solution. Thermometer makes a nice little mixer while it's at it. Let's see if we can get this all dissolved. Well, as far as I can tell, looks like we got everything pretty well. Pretty well dissolved. The water's still a light honey color, obviously a good sign. Let's check our final temperature here. What would we end up at? Oh, we're right around 80, like I said. Uh, there it is, right around 80. Like I said, I think the yeast will actually cool it down. That last little bit will be right where I want to be. So get out the old. Uh, Champagne yeast. Rip it open here. Okay, get my camera back here. So now we got this uh, ripped open here. I'm gonna add it now. Now, your mileage may vary on this. Uh, it will just sit on top and that'll work fine. I like, to, I like to shake it just a little. So you can see a few of them get down in there. Uh, let, the, let the feasting begin on the, old, on the old honey. In fact, we'll uh, mix this up a little bit. Shouldn't have mixed it quite that much, but that should get it a get it a good start. Um, and then I just put my uh, little bit of so stuff doesn't drift in. Then the next time you see this, if all goes well, right in there where it's right about at the B and the A, it'll probably blow up in a like a foamy, bready mess up to about there. Then you know you got a good starter going and then you can just pitch the whole works. 
Uh, this also hydrates the yeast, which uh, sort of helps it get going once it hits the uh, once it hits the um, fermentable. So next time you see me, uh, that should have grown, and I think I'll be ready to pitch the yeast. Well, welcome back. Not focusing very well, but uh, that's the original percentage reading, potential percent, fifteen percent. Um, is what we're looking at. It was actually at 17% because uh, I only filled it up to about five, five and a half gallon with water. So I went ahead and added it up to six. So we've got a situation here that I would call potential blowout. Not a lot of headroom. So I'll definitely be setting this in the unfinished area of the basement uh, in case it uh, has a little bit of a blowout. But blowouts aren't nearly as bad with a bucket like this. I can just keep it cleaned up and hopefully it won't be too bad. We're sitting here right on a temperature now of, if you can make that out, that's the 76 degree mark. So I uh, checked it with the real thermometer and, and this, this old uh, stripe thermometer here still works pretty well. So really good temperature for the yeast. As you can see with the grad graduations here, I'm a, I'm a good Good gallon, that's the five gallon mark there, that red mark, and so I'm about that same distance up again. Gets a little wider at the top, so I'm probably right at six gallons of 15% uh, um, original gravity. Let's take a look at our yeast starter. Before the yeast was starting at the surface down by the B and the A, you can see it's grown up uh, almost as tall as the A. Didn't get quite as tall as I thought I could let, but I could let it go. Um, definitely smells like bread. Can't show you that on, a, on the camera, but got a nice whiff of bread as I was uh, taking some readings there. Um, the, uh, the must is very tasty, very sweet. Um, maybe not as apricot as I thought, but um, let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Let's uh, take this off and take a look from the top here. Definitely get a Oh yeah, definitely a bread smell here. You can still see there's actually some dry yeast and then various levels of hydration until you get to the really frothy bits around the outside. So definitely life within the yeast starter. So it's got a good start. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pitch this in here. Just pour it right in here. Oh yeah. There we go. Probably go rinse that out just to get the last of the yeast because it's probably still some pretty uh, voracious stuff. Certainly don't want to add much more water. Like I said, I'm right at six, six gallon here. So um, I'm going to rinse that out, pop the top on, and uh, set it in the unfinished basement. And hopefully the next movie involves bubbles. <laughs> 